It is your PrisonPlanet.tv memberships that fund so much of what we do here in this operation. And then we're more than happy for the TV show after it's aired live, then be leaked out onto the web to tens of millions of people. That's our goal. Super Bowl 2013 from the season of 2012, technically Super Bowl 2012, we are going to be uh, brainwashed by uh, ads against the Second Amendment financed by the globalists and other collaborators against our liberty and the uh, exploited children of Sandy Hook survivors with their choir to tear jerk and demonize the Second Amendment. Unbelievably opportunistic and disgusting, but uh, don't ever expect the criminals that run this system to not be opportunistic and over the top. They think you are stupid. They think you are utterly uh, and totally mindless. They think there's nothing you won't buy. We're gonna be going over the latest on the Second Amendment today. But uh, there is an article out of Forbes that's excellent that we have linked up at InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. It's also, I found it at DrudgeReport.com on the left-hand side. NRA winning the influence battle over gun control. And I don't just believe polls when I hear them or see them. I've studied polls. I've studied statistics. I've studied how they work. And I'm able to gauge polls over a long period of time from what I read in quasi-internal government white papers, plus what I see on the streets. And this told me what I already knew. They went to one of the biggest and most respected data mining companies, and that's really the polling agency of the future, and found that it is a total rout of the anti-gunners, the victim disarmament, uh, kleptocratic uh, crowd that wants to disarm their quarry. Uh, in fact, they find with military precision, organically, individual gun owners uh, supported uh, through the NRA that we've taken control of. It, it was under globalist control about 20 years ago. There's, there's no doubt, and Larry Pratt agrees with me, that, that with laser, military laser-like focus is the quote, that we are annihilating the enemy. Now, that, that, that's a big plus. And it's because we realize they're an enemy, a deceptive group who don't want to take guns to keep kids safe, don't want to register guns to actually stop criminals. They want to target the American people. We've seen them take the guns in any city the globalists are in control of. We've seen them disarm people in more than 30-something nations the last 50 years or so. We know their game plan. We know their program. We know how it works. And because we're one of the last countries to hold out, like Switzerland, We've, we've gotten to have front row seats to all the tricks. And the globalists are global. They run the same program, the same plays. They switch them up a little bit, but it's basically the same playbook in country after country they try to take over. And not just on guns. When they go for the guns, it means they're insecure and they're afraid politically uh, that they're not going to get away with what they've done. And, and it means they want to use authoritarianism on the public. Now, that said, we're going to be getting into that. Uh, we're going to be getting into an amazing report up at InfoWars.com that ties into like seven other links just in the article that Kurt Nemo did. And I was even able to find some more. We're going to play some of these clips coming up. Uh, Reverend Jesse Jackson, uh, to rip off Rush Limbaugh's <laughs> way he says it, but well, that's how Reverend Jackson always says it. The Reverend Jesse Jackson uh, says gun supporters... Are domestic terrorists. I shouldn't laugh. <laughs> there was a video saying on the on the comments on Infowars.com right before showtime, like 10 minutes before air, I laughed so hard I, I could hardly go on air. You ever laugh so hard it you know makes you start coughing and then you can't quit? It said Jesse Jackson responds to Infowars.com. And I thought, well, let me put that, let me put that YouTube URL in. And it was chunk from the Goonies. <laughs> 
<laughs> and then I realized that actually there is a resemblance to Jesse Jackson. I, I couldn't believe that. <laughs> oh my gosh, he's the black chunk. <laughs> I'm sorry. We're going to be right back. Stay with us. <laughs> Nobody rides for free. The globalists are not going to make our servicemen and women, mainly men, serve two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine tours in the last 12 years and not have massive suicides, massive uh, mental problems, massive health problems as well. Did you know that they make U.S. military personnel, you can look this up, go into combat and force them back into combat when they've had legs blown off? Oh, you didn't know that. Thank you for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. It is Sunday, Sunday, the third day of February 2013. I am Alex Jones, your syndicated radio talk show host, and I am very, very thankful that you have joined us today. Wow, where to begin? Uh, number one, there's new numbers out. New numbers out. Uh, 22 um, service men and women commit suicide every single day. That is more than seven times the previous record from the end of the Vietnam War in 1973, 74, 75, when they had bad suicides. That is 22 military veterans commit suicide every day. And I want you to know they're going to talk about the veterans and talk about how great they are and talk about how they love them and, and try to connect the veterans and their valor and their, their heroism in many cases to the establishment and the criminals that run our government from both political parties and the whole police state they're setting up. And even though a lot of these wars have been fraudulent and wrong and have been done for globalist interest, still the men and women of the military that I've met, that I know, that I've talked to, that I've researched, they are the most focused, awake people out there. And they joined because they wanted to defend this republic. And I am sick of all the fake patriotism of, oh, thank you for your service to the, you know, you know, to the country. And then, okay, well, can I have a job? Oh, I, I gotta go, I, I, I gotta go. There is a demonization program going on behind the scenes against veterans that's now busting out into the surface. And there is a public uh, cover that, oh, the government and the media and the system loves veterans. There's a lot of charities out there that have been caught raising money for veterans. It really doesn't go to the veterans. And so I just wanted to mention up front today that we're going to see lots of stuff tonight at the Super Bowl connecting football and mom and apple pie, you know, to the veterans and, and, and trying to make the political system look good. They want you to have the memory of America and the Republic and the Bill of Rights and Constitution that our troops reportedly protect while they dismantle the entire thing in the background. While they go to combat ground robots, not just drones in the air. Humans, the globalists believe, the ruling technocratic class are obsolete. We are not obsolete. The tyrants are obsolete. The old oligarchical systems of control that have plagued humanity in every civilization and every culture for more than 6,000 years are obsolete. We either end this, this system of dumbing down the public and of playing groups off against each other and balkanization and divide and conquer, or humanity isn't going to make it. All right, we got a big broadcast lined up for you again. I'm live here on the all holy day of Super Bowl, Super Bowl Sunday, and I'm here because football is not America. Football is not freedom. Football is a game that has been turned into nothing but a giant propaganda arm of the globalists. And you're going to see ads paid for by the billionaire Bloomberg, who got his money from insider operations on the stock exchange, the gangster who's got armed guards and helicopters and the rest of it who flies above us, he is sponsoring. He's the main guy giving money to mayors against gun violence, like the guns did it themselves. And we're going to play this ad coming up. He's running an ad. There's other ads, and they're, and they're trying to get, get donations out there to create an anti-gun, anti-Second Amendment move uh, across the country. They're going to have uh, the little children of Sandy Hook from the choir are being exploited by the globalist mafia. They're going to be singing during the halftime. Uh, this, this is something I personally, 
personally am boycotting. Our country's in deep trouble, folks. And uh, I hear all these other talk show hosts about, man, the good thing about being America is the Super Bowl. I'm going to savor this big game. I'm going to, I want my Bill of Rights and Constitution. I want my factories back. I want my jobs back. I don't want the government shutting down our power plants while China builds three new ones a week. I think going into depression is a bad thing. I'm not watching games. I'm defending my constitutional republic on this Sunday broadcast. And I'm not, I don't need to be thanked for coming in on a Sunday. It's an honor to be here. It's an honor to be on the radio six days a week, broadcasting all over the world, warning not just the United States, but the planet about the global private crime syndicate known as the New World Order. Okay, let me stop right there and tell you what's coming up uh, on the Second Amendment front today. Not just the Super Bowl being turned into a giant anti-gun extravaganza, anti-liberty extravaganza. Reverend Jesse Jackson says gun supporters are domestic terrorists. The video is up there. He told the Wall Street Journal this four days ago, and it made it into two newspapers uh, about Jesse Jackson on gun violence and economic summit. And the big bombshell is he says, we're going to have to have reconstruction we're going to have to have the North take over the South. Uh, gun owners are racist. They're the new, they're the new, uh, uh, what do you call it, a confederacy. And, uh, and again, that's a talking point. i got a bunch of clips we're going to play right now and then coming into the next segment. Where on all these different shows, you've seen it, you've read it, race has nothing to do with it. And they're just injecting this to create division. It is unprecedented. And you've got Bob Schaefer on CBS saying, we defeated Hitler and the Nazis. We can defeat gun owners. We can take their guns on CBS. He said the president defeated Hitler or the Nazis. No, our, our grandparents and great-grandparents did. Just amazing. Uh, we've got other clips of Fox Sports saying, look, you know, the NRA gun owners are the Ku Klux Klan. We've got Jesse Jackson saying it. Uh, and then meanwhile, I see this every few days now. This is just from a few days ago. MSNBC has hosts on, mainly white hosts, saying, oh, the racist crackers need to give their guns up. Yeah, the Republicans are all just racist crackers. That'd be like using the N-word to talk about black people. And it's meant to fire up racial division uh, in this country. And then politically correct groups can slam anybody that says, hey, I don't like you, you know, trying to put me down. And everybody else will just through guilt basically submit to that. So that's coming up. Uh, also, Chris Kyle, uh, the uh, sniper, the Navy SEAL sniper was gunned down yesterday up outside Dallas uh, with, with, with the head of his foundation and a PTSD Marine. They reportedly taken out there. He's been arrested there. They've charged him today. And, and, and they're saying that uh, this individual, and I'll give you his name, uh, this individual who had PTSD and was under psychiatric care, Eddie Ray Roth, uh, is the main suspect in the killing as a $3 million bond. Now, again, you have 22 service people killing themselves a day, and that's why I brought that up. And then every couple of weeks, you'll hear about a service person killing their wife or their boss or something. Statistically, out of 300, and it's now 20 million people, I mean, statistically, we've shown the statistics, FBI.gov, Mass shootings are 88 a year, 88 people, about half those gang-related. Uh, veterans killing people is not even a 1,000 a year. Sounds like a big number, but uh, it, it, it's, it's not even the top 100 causes of death uh, in this country. But the media creates this illusion, and I remember seeing these Homeland Security reports four years ago when Obama got in, suddenly saying veterans, gun owners, conservatives, libertarians, they're the terrorists, they're going to attack. Veterans will use IEDs in every city to bomb police departments. Remember that? And they were giving the cops the training. And I thought, well, that doesn't make sense. Sure, you've got troops committing suicide. You've got them putting them on psychotropics that say on the insert they can make you commit suicide or go on a psychotic rampage. That's there, but still those numbers won't be high enough to... The point is they're going to initiate and stage events. I've been saying that. I'm not saying this is staged, but it fits the MO. With these psych psychotropically hopped up mind control subjects to start this stuff. And look who it is. It's Chris Kyle. We're going to break that down as well. All this and more coming up today. I'm Alex Jones. Infowars.com is the new site. All right, we are back live here. I'm going to race through the key developments in the battle 
that's happening right now for the Second Amendment. And we're winning the uh, war right now, but that doesn't mean we'll continue to win unless we continue to fight. And Forbes has a big article where they contracted a large data mining firm that's actually tracking what you're saying, not just what fake polls are putting out. And they find that we are routing them on the Second Amendment. But we were routing them on Obamacare. And the fact that it was written by the insurance companies as a forced corporate tax to rip people off and would double premiums the first year. That's this year. It's now happening. And have the average family yearly premium be $20,000 a year by 2016. That's now official. But it doesn't matter. They got it in place. They're going to ram it down your throat. Just because we're winning the fight for hearts and minds doesn't mean we're winning. We have to go a step further, and I'm going to get to that Forbes article coming up. NRA winning the influence battle over gun control. I'm going to explain how most of these big polls are fake. Now you can tell if a poll is accurate or not. Okay, let's just stop right there. Uh, again, up at Infowars.com and our other sister site, PrisonPlanet.com, Reverend Jesse Jackson says gun supporters are domestic terrorists, and the uh, full interview and video uh, is up there. But first, I wanted to play some uh, other clips. Uh, here is Jason Whitlock of Fox Sports uh, elaborating uh, on how he believes the NRA, that means gun owners, it's never the Second Amendment. You don't have to talk about that. It's the NRA. It's never we the people. It's the NRA speaks for us, and they're the new KKK. Nothing racially involved. Uh, the NRA set up to train at the end of the Civil War. Northern recruits and soldiers how to shoot, including blacks. Has nothing to do with the KKK. Never has. The KKK in the South got the first gun control laws passed in 1868 because they didn't want blacks who were newly freed to get guns. The truth is the anti-gunners have the KKK history, but it's just amazing. It's just, it's just so incredible. Let's go to that clip. I did not go as far as I would like to go because my, my thoughts on the NRA uh, and America's gun culture, I, I believe the NRA is the new KKK. Wow. And that <clears throat> the, the arming of so many black youth uh, and loading up our communities with drugs and then just having an open shooting gallery is, is the work of people that, you know, obviously don't have our best interests. You know what's funny? And you I know what's funny? It, drugs in this country, when they started crimp, uh, making them illegal in the 30s, the first places it was kind of left alone was the lower income areas. So in a way, what this guy's actually saying is true, that the drugs were allowed in the minority communities and because it was a pretext to, you know, basically get control of those communities. But that's corrupt mafias, knowing they could operate somewhere because others would say, not in my backyard. They always try to build the chemical plant in the poor neighborhood. They always try to, I mean, it doesn't matter if it's India, and all it is is Indians living there. They go put the chemical plant in the poor neighborhood. It's not about race so much as it is about not in my backyard of the rich people. But just injecting the NRA is the new KKK. No, sir, the people in New York and Chicago in the last 55, 60 years that took all the guns out of your cities so that only criminals have them, so you have the highest crime rates in the world in places like Chicago and New York, Chicago's number one, that's what allowed this culture. And MTV promoting gangster rap and cop killer rap, where I just saw some other famous rappers just shot each other last week. I mean, I mean it's crazy. That's, that's, that's black rappers putting that out, and then the media and Sumner Redstone putting it out via Viacom and MTV. That's not my fault. I don't want you to die. I'm sick and tired of hearing, because I'm white, I inherently don't like you. Now, a lot of whites who weren't racist hear all this and go, well, you know what, I don't like you either. Well, you know what, I'm not going to stoop to the level of Jesse Jackson and uh, people like uh, the individual uh, Jason Whitlock. I mean, these people are a joke. And they're, they're the racist, it's clear. And it's how they sit there and are, and, are, and are identity politic people. And notice, they always tell whites and conservatives, don't be identity politic. You know why they say that? Because that's effective. It's effective. But see, I don't want to just be some gang. I want people to identify with the Bill of Rights and Constitution and Declaration of Independence and freedom and all men are created equal, endowed by their creator. An idea our founders had that didn't even get expressed to the last few decades. I have a dream. 
that will judge people by the character of their deeds, the content of what they stand for, not off what color they are. But let me tell you something. The Democratic Party is now the party of institutional racism and aggression. And it's disgusting. Let's go ahead and go to another clip. Here's Jesse Jackson bumbling around. But if you listen to it, he, he, he implies that the states' rights movement, it's inherently racist. It's the new confederacy. Well, what do you call it when the federal government's run by foreign banks overturning the entire Bill of Rights Constitution? The states are supposed to step in with a check and a balance. That's the three branches of government, and then those two are split into two again. Just like the legislative split in two. It's meant so you don't get a dictator. But oh no, it's just racist. Here's Jesse Jackson. These weapons, we're not talking about guns for your house and guns for hunting. These are military Hit weapons. Hit pause. Can blow it's always the same script. Back it up, please. We're not talking about guns for your house, guns for hunting. Chicago, New York, and a bunch of other cities where these people run things, where the globalist, liberal, socialist, collectivist, authoritarians, they're not really liberals, where they run things, they take all the guns. And then people like Jesse Jackson has bodyguards and a concealed carry, and Diane Feinstein does, and Bloomberg does, and 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 Michael Moore has guns and, and and bodyguards. Charlie Sheen, who I know well for seven years, you know, probably stayed at his house twenty times. You know, he's like, well, I got bodyguards, so nobody needs guns. Hey, Charlie, and I told him this: not everybody makes three million dollars a week like you, bro. It's not all about, oh, we feel sorry for the kids, let's turn the guns in, just as a sign we're sad for them. The globalists, we should be mad at the globalists, the PR propagandists using the dead kids to go after our guns. Again, here is Jesse Jackson. Oh, we don't want your guns, we just, not for hunting. The Second Amendment isn't for that. You know, it's a script, folks. He knows that. He's following a script. They want the government to be able to totally take over while it arms the teeth against us. Uh, let's go back to that clip. Here it is. I went out to the hot guy's house who killed the people at Aurora. He was right near the airport uh, runway. He could blow, blow up airplanes with that stuff. Are we, we waiting for that? That's like the next step. These anti-American people say, we're really arming to stop the government from taking our, taking, they're fighting the government. This is a Confederate ideology. This is like serious stuff with power to do something about how they feel. And it's a place like Chicago, we need Homeland Security, not just the local police. The local police, if, th if, if this is Chicago, and this is Chuck's gun shop right here, half of all guns that killed people the last five years come from this gun shop. They can do them and look at it. They know, they know where the gun, if this is Iraq, you know where the guns are made. All right, hit so pause. We're going to go to break and come back with the rest of it. And I got a bunch of other clips where MSNBC's Finney says, you know, it, it's the crackers. Everything's their fault. White people. Evil flows from white people. I mean, the ultimate bigotry, unit, just like the Nazis saying evil flows from the Jews. But it's okay because it's the Democratic Party run by foreign banks who want to get a race war going in this country. That's their goal. I mean, no doubt. We'll be right back. These people are terrorists. I will give the number out uh, coming up here in the next segment. We'll have open phones in the second hour. We are into the first hour. Uh, 33 minutes into it right now. Okay, if you just joined us, I played a clip of uh, Fox Sports caster Jason Whitlock. He's also a syndicated columnist saying the NRA is the new KKK. And I have uh, similar clips here by, uh, well, we had uh, Al Sharpton say, quote, in fact, I forgot to get that clip queued up. We'll play that after these clips if you can find it. Say that we've got to overcome the South and Whites and uh, the Constitution, he even said the Constitution. You saw that a few weeks ago in the news. And it's every couple days I see prominently the talking point by white, black, Hispanic commentators, you name it, uh, that, that gun ownership is racist. And they know how politically correct Americans are. If they said put your child uh, in ongoing traffic or throw your child into uh, the oven or the microwave or you're racist, I think most Americans would probably go stick their child in the microwave and turn it on. And I'm, I'm not even being sarcastic. I think we've gotten the politically correct point that if they came to your house and said, slit your wrist or you're racist, the average white American would slit their wrist. They would, they would absolutely do that. All right, let's go ahead and go back to the Jesse Jackson clip. Here it is. I mean, you'd break up, you'd break up the trail. You know, we used the guns made in Barrington, Rock Island, sold at Chuck's and Twitter stuff. They make them just sit in and they kill. We sat around feeling helpless. 
And so you got some combination in this drug thing, in this gun thing of, of territorial fights, the gun fights over that. Maybe 4% were killed assault weapons. They're killing these other, these locks and these magazines where the killing is taking place there. Some others is just shoot out because, that's the, because the culture is into guns as a remedy. My point is, while we're focusing on fiscal cliff and debt ceiling, what we hear is this stuff is not on the table and it matters, it's metastasizing and it's festering. So we're trying to put some focus on this issue of reconstruction. Not just, and we need targeted job for these zones of heavy unemployment. The black males in Chicago and New York, maybe around 50% unemployed, around 50% big number here in New York. But so beyond just the job, some plan for reconstruction. And we know how to do it, we've done it, and we do it around the world. All right, let's go ahead and go to MSNBC just a few days ago, talking about the real problem in America. Here it is. Those, you know, crazy crackers on the right, like if they start with their very hateful language, that is going to kill them in the same way. The death now for Republicans is the tone of this conversation. Yes. They absolutely, I mean, we had evangelical Latinos wanting to meet with Howard Dean at the DNC. Because, <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, like, that's a shift, right? It's not the beginning right. to a bad joke. Now, this is part of the hoax that the Republican Party's gone, conservatism's dead, uh, everybody really wants total socialism. Wow, this is a mandate. Uh, I'm going to talk about that at the end of the segment when I want to go back to some of these clips uh, here first. Uh, let's go to this next uh, clip. This is Bob Schaefer on CBS saying presidents could defeat uh, racism. Uh, the presidents could defeat the Nazis. They can defeat the NRA, i.e. gun owners. They don't want to say gun owners or the Second Amendment or the Bill of Rights. They say the NRA. First, they demonize the NRA. They're Nazis. They're scum. They're KKK. And then by extension, you. And then now Homeland Security met on Monday with the uh, top mayors and sheriffs and police chiefs, as you know. And I've got those reports coming up and said, no, the new terror threat is not Al-Qaeda. It's gun owners, conservatives, libertarians, what they call domestic extremists. They're returning veterans. And they're just hyping that. Of tens of millions of veterans, they'll use every week a veteran robs a bank, a veteran shoots somebody. Well, all veterans did that. Oh, somebody does a mass shooting, gets the guns illegally, on a bunch of psychotropic drugs. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It's gun owners killed the children. The veteran kills his wife. Veterans did that. Doesn't matter statistically, and you can look this up at FBI.gov. We've done reports on it. Uh, they've got it broken down in racial groups, demographics, everything. You know that uh, veterans are one of the most law-abiding groups out there. Doesn't matter what reality is. You are bad. You are bad. Let's go ahead and go to this uh, next clip with Bob Schaefer. What happened in Newtown was probably the worst day in this country's history since 9-11. We found Osama bin Laden. We tracked him down. We changed the way uh, that we dealt with that problem. Uh, surely finding Osama bin Laden, surely passing civil rights legislation as Lyndon Johnson was able to do, and before that, surely defeating the Nazis uh, was a much more formidable task than taking on the gun law. Uh, this is a turning point uh, in this country, and uh, the president is going to have to do more than just make a speech about it. This is one of the best speeches I've ever heard him deliver, but it's going to take more than that from the White House. He's going to have to get his hands dirty. He's going to have to get in there and, and work this problem until he gets it done. But uh, unless we figure out a way to make sure that something like Newtown never happens again, uh, we're not the country that we once were. I think we still are. I think there's hope. I think something's going to happen. Well, there you go. The president, you know, overcame the Nazis so, so he can overcome the gun owners. See, we are now the Nazis. We, they tell you, you are KKK. You are Nazis. Uh, every time I see a clip of, of MSNBC, they're saying whites are inherently bad. In fact, I've been hearing it's, it's over for conservatives. White women support Obama. Uh, blacks support Obama. Hispanics, Asians. And then the media does this victory dance. Oh, it's over. It's all over for the unknown soldier. And this big victory dance that, oh, man, it's over. And again, the foreign banks are raping you financially. They're robbing you. They've raised the different taxes across the board. 
Uh, they've raised the payroll taxes on people making thirty thousand dollars a year. They've raised all these other investment taxes. Uh, the Obamacare plan sets it up where the companies cut their full-time employees back to twenty-five hours. So they don't have to uh, get the uh, insurance, and the GDP is already shrinking massively. That's the plan. Get you on welfare, but it matters as long as you feel like you're winning. No, the truth is, the fix was in as I clearly broke down, and it's done hard to break down. Mitt Romney's a globalist. Mitt Romney was for gun control. He helped write the assault weapons ban that passed in his state, semi-auto ban. The truth is he supported carbon taxes. He supported open borders. He supported abortion. Do you want to keep going? But they, they put out the two guys who were almost identical in reality. But they have a political fight with each other. Romney then becomes a conservative, says some good things, but it's all for show, like a Don King boxing match. And then Obama wins, and there's evidence of massive election fraud. And I don't just say that. There was evidence of fraud against Al Gore in 2000. I hate Al Gore, but I'm on record saying there was evidence of fraud against him. There is overwhelming evidence that Mitt Romney really won. Bev Harris, a black box voting, who's been a big Democrat, it would help make the HBO documentary, Hacking Democracy, said she saw a lot more fraud towards Romney than towards Obama. The fix was in, so the Republican leadership, Jindal and, and even Rand, who's a good guy, could be told to come out by their consultants and say, we've got to get with the times and then we'll start winning. I guess get with the times become left of Mao Zedong on the false paradigm. Because that's what's going on in this country. That's what's happening. That's the bill of goods that we've been sold as a society. And it makes me physically, physically nauseous to see this unfolding. The truth is Congress for about six years, you can look this up, uh, just type it in. Congress has a 9% approval rating. And some numbers in data mining companies have put out, I'm going to go over some of that in the next hour, show, or maybe even the next segment, show that it might be as low as 3%. So 90-something percent of people conservatively, 91% conservatively, probably more, don't like the government. But if they can get it in a Coke, Pepsi, Ford, Chevy, Redskin, Cowboy, Seattle Seahawks versus the Eagles, you know, whatever, if they can get a fight going between two groups, then they can get you to join a bandwagon and kind of join one side. Total con game. Oldest trick in the book false choice and that's what they've sold so there are a lot of weak-minded kind of bandwagon folks that had gotten away from obama in the last four years when he didn't deliver all the free goods they kind of got back on the bandwagon because they want to be winners well by saying you like obama you're a winner second hour is only about 13 14 minutes away and after the news we'll be back and be taking your phone calls on the second amendment but also the overarching police state and more. I'll also be getting into the Navy SEAL uh, and his uh, compatriot who were killed up by Dallas yesterday. Very suspicious story. We're going to be breaking that down as well. The toll-free number to join us is 877-789-ALEX. It's a different number than the weekday show. 877-789-2539. 877-789-2539. And uh, first-time callers, give first-time callers a chance. Please only call if you're a first-time caller on this Sunday edition to give us your breakdown on what's happening and unfolding. Okay, let's continue uh, getting into the Second Amendment attack. Um, in the article up at Infowars.com, linked in red in the featured news uh, area, Reverend Jesse Jackson says gun supporters are domestic terrorists. And, and basically that the, you know, the new radicalism, the new extremism is this new confederacy and that the gun thing's being used to try to, again, it, it's, it's just more of what you've heard of, well, Fox sports commentators saying the NRA is the new KKK. And, and that's what's said. If you don't like Obamacare, you're a racist. If you don't like globalism, you're a racist. If you don't like giving up your liberty, you're a racist. It, it's racial politics. Because this country now in the under 20s is way more, quote, minority than it is white. But if there's, uh, again, under this system now, that's fine. They don't want whites having racial politics, okay, regardless of which side of that thing you're on. There's a lot of different sides. But they certainly are going to create racial politics. And notice it's a bunch of white limousine liberals who are leading it because they represent these foreign mega banks that have signed us on to debt slavery. That's the real civil rights violation, that we're going under Agenda 21 
where globalist corporations are exempt from all these regulations and taxes designed to shut down their competition. That China can have three new coal power plants a week, we can't have any. And hundreds have already been shut down the last four years. And our power prices are going up. And our economy is shutting down. So the whole gun thing is also about scripting Obama. There should never be another child shot again. And if there is, it's gun owner's fault. He puts out that false idea. And then diverts everyone from his drone killings. Arming Al-Qaeda in Libya and Syria. Uh, the police state, the secret arrest, the NDAA, the continuing torture, the banker bailouts, all of this tyranny. They don't want us getting in a populist movement unified by the Bill of Rights and Constitution and freedom together. They want to unify disparate racial groups under a socialist ideology where their chief is government versus the middle class, which the establishment sees as predominantly white. And so it is a racial ideology and a racial system for the globalist in what they're doing. They are, they are welding together a racial coalition. And I've known so-called progressives that are really smart people and know what's going on. Uh, and they, they now will, people I used to have on as guests, they will sit there and say it is racist to not turn your guns in. It is, it is racist to not support Obamacare. Uh, even though it's a ripoff written by insurance companies. It is, and, and, and it's like a cult. They are just absorbing into the hive Borg. These are authoritarians, and they get a wild, reflected glory. A lot of humans are designed to get wild, reflected, group think, group power out of tribalism. And the government is the big overarching tribe welding in all these different groups and it doesn't matter if the government's screwing them. It doesn't matter if the government's destroying their future. It doesn't matter if the government's injecting them with deadly vaccines full of cancer viruses and aspartame and thousands of foods. It doesn't matter because they feel like winners, and that's what matters to them. They feel like, hey, the government's my government. In fact, we have an Al Sharpton clip coming up that we will play that one. They're finding the one where he says we've got to get you know, defeat the Constitution. He says, we've got to, you know, we've got to defeat the Constitution. We've got to defeat uh, the South. Uh, I played that last week. Uh, we have a clip of Sharpton coming up after I play this mayor clip, of this uh, new Mayors Against Gun Violence ad, where he says, hey, forget the Second Amendment. Yeah, it was there to protect you from the government, but we got drones now. The government's got drones. And that's what they say when I'm on these different so-called liberal shows, these authoritarian shows in, 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 in liberal clothing. Thomas Jefferson was a liberal. These aren't liberals. I know I say that every day because it's so true. You've got to get that through your head, folks. And I'm sitting there, even before I went on CNN, they're like, oh, we don't want to hear it's for guns, the producer was saying, to protect you from government. The government has drones. And I've been on countless shows. You hear it everywhere where they say, well, the government has drones. Yeah, and humans pilot those, and they're under, quote, the Bill of Rights and Constitution. They're not they're not under the declaration of war by Congress. They are illegal. They're attacking countries illegally. But the point is we could get back control of them. Our government couldn't take over Vietnam. Our government running our military couldn't, couldn't hold Baghdad. So I don't want to hear that because there's drones that, you know, forget it. The hive Borg, you will be assimilated. Nothing can defeat uh, the New World Order. It's our tax money, our energy that built this giant military. Now they're getting rid of posse commentatus. They've, they announced last week they're going to use the military for domestic operations to fight terrorists. And now any gun crime, any crime where a gun is used is considered terrorism. That's the big announcement in the news. I told you years ago it was coming. So you're now the terrorists, the spying, the data mining, the checkpoints. They've announced they're going to use the NSA to target, quote, gun crime. They've announced they're going to use it to target domestic extremists. Remember, they weren't spying on us five years ago, and then, well, we're doing it to fight al-Qaeda. And now, forget about al-Qaeda. I even have a CNN article I'm going to get to where they say, al-Qaeda's not an issue now. Well, yeah, because it works for the globalists publicly. Even General Boykin's come out and exposed that now. Former head of special forces. No, no, no. It's you. You're the terrorist. Well, no kidding. The thing was always set up for us. It was always set up for the federal government to absorb the states. And now they're saying Obama is the new Lincoln. Anyone that opposes what he does is a confederate. And now you're seeing it on CNN, Fox, Wall Street Journal, all these different pundits saying the new confederacy is any state that resists. 
Obama is here. He is coming. He knows best. You know, they're going to shut down the plants, shut down the factories, raise the taxes till they bankrupt everything except insiders that are exempt. And then you'll go on food stamps. You'll go on government assistance. And they're going to have national compulsory service. They're already announcing it. And the conservatives will say, hey, don't let those liberals not work since, you know, 100 million, 200 million will be on welfare by the time they're done. And then you're in forced labor. They did it under Roosevelt. They're already calling to bring it back, but 10 times worse. They're not going to be building National Park lodges this time. They're going to absolutely have gun control checkpoints. That's in the FEMA Corps documents from nine years ago in the Baltimore Sun and the Philadelphia Inquirer, how they were training the small units of FEMA Corps college students to assist the police in finding illegal guns and radioing them in. And they have these weird red uniforms, black trousers and red uniforms, completely fascist. You've seen the videos. Obama says, we need a national, you know, uh, a defense force, a domestic force, just as big and just as strong as our military. And then the videos of the training corps you know, sitting there worshiping Obama like it's North Korea, doing chants about Obama and doing military drills. I mean, it's archetypally authoritarian. And Bloomberg, who made $2 billion off of insider deals, the evidence is clear in the stock market, who wants to tell you what you can drink and what you can eat and what you can do has illegal checkpoints and now body scanners all over New York City, a goon with his own private security force that, that, that roughs people up in D.C., the talk radio network reporter who politely asked him a question last week. This goon wants your guns to ensure that his quarry, his property is defanged to make sure you're gelded. And now today, during the Super Bowl coming up, they're going to air this ad like, we're children, please take the guns, please have a background check. When they have background checks in 90-something percent of the sales, they want it for when you sell to your neighbor or give a gun to somebody, where you can't ever transfer a gun again. That's what her bill says. And every time they register, they then confiscate. Criminals aren't going to follow the law anyways. But the, the children, please take the guns for us. This is how sick it is. Here's that clip from the upcoming ad today. Shows cute little children. The NRA once supported background checks. And they play patriotic music in the background when they're globalist. We think it's reasonable to provide mandatory instant criminal background checks for every sale at every gun show. No loopholes anywhere for anyone. America can do this for us. America can do it. Please. And, and folks, 20 years ago, 20 years ago, LaPierre said that. But LaPierre has now said it doesn't work. Criminals still get guns. And he went further. He said the, the people don't trust the system anymore. That's right. They don't want background checks because they're angels and really want to save kids. The globalists could care less. The government shipped guns into Mexico to blame the Second Amendment and killed tens of thousands of people. Several thousand confirmed, almost 60,000 dead the last six years in Mexico, where they've taken all the guns already. All right, I haven't even scratched the tip of the iceberg, but I'm not going to make callers wait. I'm going to get to the strange death, the very suspicious death of Chris Kyle, who Jesse Ventura has been suing and winning in court. Kyle has had no witnesses. Uh, Jesse had, I think, like six eyewitnesses that he came, he went, he spoke at the commencement, he left. Why would he come to a thing full of seals and say, I'm glad seals are dying? He never talks like that. And then no witnesses to him being beat up. Kyle really was going to probably expose some big wigs in the lawsuit. And then he took a lot of vets out who would contact him, say they had problems. They probably sent a wind-up toy in on him, which has been declassified. They've got these people, Sirhan, Sirhan, you name it. I'm going to give you my, t and I don't just say that, okay? It's got a lot of telltale signs. But a real PTSD crazy would have those signs, too. We know he's under psychiatric care, so the drugs alone do it. We're going to look at that. Also, the good news out of Forbes, um, where it breaks down from data mining, not polling, real data mining. Uh, the uh, gun grabbers are getting their head handed to them. Politically, though, they could still go forward. They don't care. But this is the big fight. This is the big issue. As I said before, Obama got reelected. Well, I tell you, doesn't Wayne LaPierre and others 
get a lot of credibility. You know what? Remind me tomorrow with the nightly news, John, to go get the clips where Bob uh, Chapman, before he died, talked about this too. But uh, the head of the head of gun owners uh, of America and the head of the NRA, who, who by the way, the head of gun owners of America is back on tomorrow on the nightly news. They all said, that we have our intel, there'll be a huge attack on the Second Amendment once Obama gets back in. And Obama and the media said, that's a conspiracy theory. And then now look what's happened. Uh, so pretty, pretty darn, pretty darn uh, amazing that Larry Pratt and so many others said that and it indeed happened. And then we're going to get into um, this whole skeet shooting thing. And I haven't talked too much about the last few shows because I had so many other things on the front burner. But Obama says, I've been out skeet shooting. I've never seen a shotgun like that he's shooting. Really weird looking. Looks like a smoke gun or something. Like a pop gun. And the White House put it out and said, you're not authorized to use this photo. It's only for press and media. You can't put something out and vaguely say press and media can use it and then nobody else can. Plus, it was taken. I, I actually checked into the law and the regulations and, and precedent on this with fair use. If taxpayer money pays for a film production... 100% taxpayer funded, or if a tax uh, funded operation um, puts something out there in public domain, they can't selectively say who can't use it. And the claim that no one has a right to use or alter the photo, knowing people would Photoshop it, and people thought it was almost a joke, like they were baiting people to create a new meme of Obama shooting the gun. No, the White House photos, I've been on there now, say copyright and you can't use these. Well, of course we use them. I mean, just because these criminals say we can't use our property. Yeah, there it is. Obama mocked for releasing skeet shooting photo during gun control debate. And people have got him shooting at the Constitution. And like Looney Tunes with a flag comes out of the, comes out of the shotgun. Look at that weird looking shotgun. I got to say, that looks like fake smoke. That looks, I, I've never seen, I've videoed a lot of guns firing. I've never seen a shotgun with that weird white thing on the end. It looks like a rubber stopper. And then there's that smoke looks fake. And then the porting. I know they've got ports on the side, but, man, something's weird. Something, and it's almost like they put this fake stuff out to create the debate. I mean, like that, it wasn't just that they put that out in layers with a computer program problem. It, it had different type fonts within the same typeset, and it was a fake font that's meant to look like old-fashioned typewriter, but the C's, the D's, all the letters had the same splats around them. With a real typewriter, each splat is different, even with the same letter, because it's like a fingerprint or a snowflake. I mean, it's just, it's 100% fake. I mean, you understand? There's no debating. Fake, 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 fake. And, and I've got a good eye. Anybody's got a good eye that's worked with Photoshop. That photo looks fake. That photo looks fake, okay? That, I've shot more skeet than I'd care to even remember. That looks fake. What kind of gun is that? We'll be right back with your calls. All right, we're into the second hour here of the Sunday Transmission. I'm back weekdays, 12 noon to 3 p.m. Eastern. That's 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central. Thank you so much again for joining us on this Sunday broadcast. I'm going to go to your calls for the next two segments or so. Then I'm going to get back into Second Amendment news, and then I've also got some Postal Service news. They say they're now immune from local traffic laws. And when I saw this uh, Yahoo headline, I thought a cop must have given them a ticket for being stopped in a no-stopping zone, but they're able to stop because they're putting mail out. And then I read the article, and it was about them running red lights and speeding through school zones with kids almost being run over. And the judges ruled they're immune. That is, again, the new royalty. I, I mean, and again, on average, post men and women are really good people. Uh, I, I'm not a big fan of government institutions, but this is one of the first American institutions. It's pioneering our postal system invented by Benjamin Franklin. Uh, and I like the competition that there's a bunch of companies out there like FedEx and, and, and UPS and then a government one, you know, where they can all compete against each other. I don't like the fact that it's subsidized now. I think it kind of subsidizes the other guys in a way. But the point is, is that the fact that a judge has ruled they're above the law, Katie, bar the door. It's the same with the cops. They don't get in trouble when they're speeding and it's not an emergency. 
I mean, this is the new governing class where they're above the law. And the U.N. has diplomatic immunity, all the rest of it. Well, I guess I already got to that, didn't I? There it is. Postal Service is immune from local traffic laws. Running red lights and speeding in school zones. I <laughs> just... You know, I was never a big speeder in neighborhoods, but now that I have children, I mean, I just drive like five miles an hour when I'm going through neighborhoods. And I still almost have run over people on bikes and little kids right out in front of you. Uh, like just this week, I was cutting through a neighborhood going about 10 miles an hour, and little kids uh, came shooting out in front of me on their scooters, you know, little kick scooters. And I was going like six miles an hour, and thank God I was, or I'd have, I almost hit one of them. I was going six miles an hour. Yeah, it makes your heart stop. It certainly does, CJ. Yeah, there it is. Postal Service. We're immune from local traffic laws. My favorite example is the UPS truck driver delivering mail while naked. Or USPS. Excuse me for, I did not mean to defame uh, UPS. I said USPS. Okay, I, yeah, I guess the, U, the USPS is immune, but not FedEx and uh, not UPS. Okay, I'm going to go to your calls. Then I'm going to get to NRA winning the influence battle over gun control. I don't just believe an op-ed. I don't just believe a poll unless I've done my own back research. Because you have internal market studies you can get at that are pretty accurate. See, corporations want internal market research. That's where you find the really accurate stuff. And I'm going to be getting to some of that. A big data mining company, we are routing them on the gun issue. But for one reason, we are sustained. And they admit in their algorithms, we're going to lose the Second Amendment if we don't keep pushing. So they're telling the, uh, the uh, anti-gun groups, just, just you know, it, it's a war of stamina. And so that's coming up uh, as well. And the uh, Chris Kyle, Navy SEAL, the Ventura suing, uh, he got shot and killed yesterday. Very suspicious. We're going to be looking at that some. But right now, let's go to some of your calls. Kim, Michael, Daryl, Zane. Jose, John, Frank, Zach, Glenn, Dan, Scott, and others. Uh, we're going to go to you. Let's start at the bottom of the calls this time, instead of the top. Let's go to Scott in Colorado. You're on the air. Welcome, Scott. How you doing, Alex? I'm doing all right, but I tell you, it's getting crazy. Absolutely is. Obama's taking over. I, I got to say that I've never uh, thought it would move this quick. But, but yeah, he's, he says the U.N.'s over our military. He can secretly arrest us if he wants. Uh, he's arresting good whistleblowers that expose any government criminal activities. It's unprecedented. I have a question for you, Alex. Yes. Who's Mallory Mahoney? Mallory Mahoney is one of our uh, graphics people that works here at the office. Wasn't she formerly with Stratford? You know, you guys are mentally ill, and I appreciate your call. You know, whenever uh, we hired six graphics people for the magazine and for working in here, and the University of Texas is here in Austin, Stratford is like a, a private intelligence gathering firm that, in my opinion, puts out propaganda. It's like a feedback loop to, like, agree with the Pentagon so they can say, look, this private group said it. And somebody worked there for a month and a half as an unpaid intern and helped write a paper on China. And, 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 I mean, what am I going to do if somebody was ever in the military or somebody ever in, in – I mean, you know how many people – you know about a third of the UT journalism people that uh, we bring in here for interviews because we hired a couple from UT. Actually, three of them are from UT. Did you know about half of them or more at, had an internship there? There's not many places to get a media internship. The Austin American Statesman, the Austin Chronicle – this is for print – the Houston uh, – or the Texas Observer, or whatever it's called, and that's small, and then Stratford, because it's mainly writing thousands of things a day. That is mental illness, you see. We're not worried about the New World Order. We're not worried about everything else. Listen, people say I work for the government, okay? I wouldn't get up here and say, don't take the vaccines. The government's pushing that. I wouldn't get up here and say criminal elements of our government were involved in 9-11, because they were, or they're running al-Qaeda in Libya and Syria. I mean, just use your brain. You know what? If I work for the government then I'm the worst government agent the planet's ever seen. Total mental illness. And people always say, you need to answer this, or you need to answer that. And no matter how many times I answer something, I will still be asked the same mentally ill question over and over again. People are looking. See, what's happened is the public has lost faith in the mainstream media and the government, which overall is a healthy thing. The Founding Fathers stated that. History shows that. But they had judgment. It doesn't mean that then everything is fake. It doesn't mean that I'm, I'm Bill Hicks 
or that I'm I'm really an actor and the professor in Florida who says that Sandy Hook may have been staged with crisis actors, which they really have, that I'm him. I mean, mental illness, mental illness. But I understand in a society in crisis, you know, just doesn't believe anything anymore. Mental illness. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to uh, another caller. Glenn in New Jersey. You're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, Alex Jones. Can you hear me? Long yes, time sir. listener. First Thank you, sir. First time Sunday caller. And I got a serious story here. A fellow member of We Are Change New Jersey has just been arrested here in Jersey City. And they're also trying to link this uh, for gun possession. And they're trying to link this to the InfoWars Obama dictator poster contest that we participated in, saying that it's extreme to print out print, uh, posters of Obama with dictator scum posted at the bottom of this. So they're saying in the Jersey Journal, it says right here, uh, NJ.com, Jersey City police say man had illegal rifle handguns as well as prohibited bullets. And so they're getting him for the uh, muzzle modification, the flash suppressor, making it an illegal weapon in New Jersey. Yeah, for those that don't the know, they're now, they're now, magazines. sure, sure, I'm glad you called in about this. And listen, I've told everybody, I didn't just say that last hour to, to have fun. They've officially announced gun owners are the number one new terror group, along with returning veterans, libertarians, and conservatives. The government is so authoritarian, so, uh, so absolutely Marxist at the grassroots of the government. It's foreign banks at the top, but they'll use whoever they've got. They are so out of control, they're openly saying... And I've already seen this, not the article you're talking about, that anyone criticizing Obama's a terrorist, anybody who owns a gun's a racist, and that we're the new terrorist, not Al-Qaeda. And Homeland Security's main job, I'm going to say that again, Homeland Security's main job is going after the American people. Now, I'm going to get that headline again from you so I can search engine it during the break and uh, uh, get it up there for me. But the, you guys can probably just search Alex Jones. What is my name in the, in the article? Uh, no, uh, they, uh, but they're trying to implicate me because I participated in the video. Okay, so they're uh, saying the Obama dictator poster contest. The name is Keith Pantaleone, 33, of Jersey City. Uh, was set to appear uh, at $75,000 bail. He currently is in Kearney Prison, and my name is Glenn Zarmanov. I'm a longtime listener. All right, well, let's just stop right there, brother. Let's just stop right there. So they do talk about my contest. To, to to put up signs saying Obama's becoming a dictator that I did three years ago that the media said should be illegal. Uh, we are, by the way, we brought the T-shirt back, the Tyrant Scum T-shirt, uh, limited edition, a new design is out, available at InfoWarsStore.com. We should all wear these proudly. Yeah, they said on more than 20 TV stations it should be banned. I should be arrested for, for saying he's a tyrant. Of course, he's proving me right. Uh, but, yeah, there's a purge against gun owners. We'll be right back. Stay with us. We have to politically get good members of the House and Senate federally, but also state legislatures, to come out authoritatively and say, look, these purges are wrong in Connecticut, New Jersey, California, New York, and other states. Uh, what's happening is, and I see these articles all the time now, we're going to go over a few of them uh, here in just a moment, where uh, not even the, the ban of over 10 capacity magazines, where you can't physically possess them, hadn't even fully gone into effect yet, and a Army veteran, no criminal record, uh, who actually ran a charity for other veterans, they, they have a license plate reading software now. Uh, most police cars in, 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 in major cities have them. And they admit, because it's on the Southern Poverty Law Center watch list, an ADL watch list, that whoever they say is a group, you now are a terrorist. You now have no rights. Returning veterans, gun owners, uh, We Are Change is a group that spun off from one of my listeners, Luke Radowski, that just goes out and asks journalist, you know, citizen questions. Uh, I'm in there. Uh, people that don't like the Federal Reserve are in there. And, and these foreign globalist organizations like the Southern Poverty Law Center and ADL, they're there saying, if you believe in a new world order, you're a terrorist. And they brainwash the cops. They tell them the founding fathers are bad. I'm not joking. I have the training videos in my film, Road to Tyranny. They tell them all this. They have four shows now airing on TV or set to air this year, demonizing the founders, uh, whole sitcoms, dramas like I Hate Paul Revere. This is the new cool thing. As Al Sharpton said, we quote, must, this is a quote, overcome the founding fathers. Overcome the Constitution was his exact quote. And 
you're like, but that doesn't make sense. We're racist because we own guns? Well, a lot of people that aren't white own guns. What? It's about individualism. It doesn't matter. They're just going to demonize you. So in the news, they say an extremist was arrested. Now, uh, he brought this up, and I actually have the article. We can punch it up on screen or go to the document cam shot here for people. Um, Jersey City police say man had illegal rifle, prohibited bullets at home. And they're saying he had over a 10-round mag, and they're saying that he had a flash depressor on it, which does nothing. So this is it. They're going to come after the gun owners. And they're now, even in the places that don't have a lot of gun laws, SWAT teaming people because the neighbor said they saw a gun and going, you'll never get your 100 guns back because you shouldn't have had 100. Or just like New Orleans where they went to the high and dry areas and took the guns. So, so here it is out of Forbes. NRA winning the influence battle over gun control. Yes, we're winning in the scientific polls. We're winning in the inner research. We're winning on the Internet scans. But they don't care. They're just going to say we're terrorists and turn Homeland Security loose on us. The government shipped 20,000 guns and hand grenades into Mexico. The memos came out to blame the Second Amendment. They're ruthless. They want our guns while they buy 1.6 billion bullets and armored vehicles and build emergency centers and federalize the police and set up warrantless checkpoints now like they have in Austin with the, the TSA. Totally illegal. Totally unconstitutional. They're just doing it. Huge military drills every day in major cities. Uh, terrorizing the public. Getting us ready for military occupation. Army Times admits they're preparing to have troops on the streets. It's already happening. Everything I warned you about 15, 16, 17 years ago is happening because they announced it today. Government to take control of private pension funds to protect them. That's the headline at Infowars.com. Big government announcement Friday. And there will be a special tax on top of the 3.8% tax already there on top of pension funds and Obamacare and the 3.8% increase in payroll tax and all the new taxes because they love you. No, it's the governing class is going to take everything we've got. It's happened hundreds of times in other nations. It's getting ready to happen here. Now, i got to get to all the callers, but Glenn in New Jersey, uh, I'll put you on hold after you go. You can give me all the names and facts. I did find where the other blog where they're talking about, yeah, this guy who had the 30-round mag, he he had, he was part of a poster contest where they put up posters saying Obama was bad. It should be illegal. These are extremists. Oh, my gosh. You don't say somebody, the government's bad in America. You don't have freedom of speech. So, yes, thank you for giving us a heads up about that. Uh, as you were saying during the break when I talked to you, they are going to try a purge of gun owners. They're testing it right now. We've got to get back in their face and go, you're the terrorists coming in and taking over our country, saying our military's under foreign control, that's official, and saying our guns are illegal. Go ahead. Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Alex Jones, for having me. No, on don't thank me, I or I won't have time to get to all the other callers. Yeah, we, no yeah, more. We, yeah, we I'm going to put you on hold. I'm going to put you on hold. Uh, Rush Limbaugh did this 20 years ago. i got to do it. You just got to say dittos. Folks, all we do is say how great I am. I am not great, okay? I'm angry. I want to keep my liberties. I don't like a bunch of crooks taking over and running my life. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead, caller. Yeah, the, the, basically, look, he's in jail right now. He is a friend of mine. We did the poster contest. His other blog, the po post is one of us, question mark, and it says part of his legal troubles might be linked to this video that he and a friend made in Jersey City, and it links to the Facebook post of the Obama poster contest that we entered in. So, yeah, they're trying to smear us. They're trying to do a purge right now. Anyone who listens to Alex Jones' Info Wars, anyone who supports liberty, and I don't even own any firearms, and that's the whole problem here is that I'm just putting uh, posters out there uh, on behalf of your poster contest or any other posters. I've done posters on my own. No, exactly. Look, ridiculous. we have an authoritarian government. Obviously, authoritarians don't like their slaves being armed. The last thing they've taken is our guns. That's the la They've already taken the bank accounts, the dollar. They're going to take everything. They need those guns first, though. They're going to go ahead with it and have a civil war. They want to get as many voluntarily as they can. We've got a Stalin or a Hitler in control, but it's bigger than Obama. The Republican leadership's been told, you better go along with it. That's why they're saying, oh, we got a broken wing. We've got to do whatever big government says. It's a mandate. Socialism. Turn your guns in because they're controlled. I'm going to put you on hold. I want to get all the info. If you write a blurb about it, we can link to it. You're going to be okay. Don't let them scare you. This is going on where the crime bosses run everything. New York, Chicago, areas of Jersey. This is what it's turned into. 
Let's jam in another call here. I got to get to more of these. Uh, let's talk to uh, Zach in Tennessee. You're on the air, Zach. Yeah, if you need to. Um, I don't know if you saw the thing today. It says three well-known Second Amendment supporters, young business owners, and I know you covered them all on your show. Chris Kyle, Keith Ratliff, the uh, FPS rusher guy, and then uh, also the John Levinsky. And it said they all died under uh, mysterious circumstances within one month. But that's not even that important. Here's what I was really going to say. No, no, about. listen, it's really starting to emerge that they've got killings. I mean, SPS Russian producer was tied up and killed execution style. There are more and more pro-gun people getting killed. Yep, and then uh, there's this video out right now called YOLO. It was all over YouTube last week, and basically it's demonizing preppers and saying that anyone who, you know, doesn't live life on the edge, it's basically a call to the young generation to do whatever they want and live recklessly. And uh, then I know you covered the uh, Milwaukee Sheriff on Piers Morgan. I was going to comment on that. But more uh, importantly than that, Bill Maher was demonizing conspiracy theorists about a week or two ago. And, you know, they were basically, he had all these uh, left and rightists on there. And they were saying, you know, 9-11 truthers are from the left. And whoever thinks the birth their thing is fake, then, you know, they're from the right. So they were just playing. No, they're, they're, they're saying you're a bad guy if you don't believe the known liars. But being a conspiracy theorist means I don't believe a government and a mainstream media system caught lying thousands of times to me. That's what it is today. If you question, if you don't just on the surface believe whatever they say. Look, how do you know if media is good? You judge the tree by its fruits. Look at the fruits of the political system. Absolute tyranny. More calls straight ahead. All right, we're back here. And you can hear the frantic voices of the people calling in. The power structure doesn't want to go after criminals. They are criminals. The power structure, and it's really bad on the East Coast and other crime syndicate controlled areas, obviously. They want to target the little guys and teach us that they're basically our owners. That's what all of this is about. Now, up on screen, if you are a TV viewer, I have an article out of the Smithsonian magazine for 40 years the russian family was cut off from all human contact unaware of world war ii in the 1930s they came to their christian village the soviet atheist and they mowed down their families mercilessly this has been declassified by the archives and in 1978 geologists were um, flying around looking for outcroppings 150 miles from even the smallest town and the helicopter picked up uh, what tended to be uh, look like tilled fields. I want to do a whole report on this. And this family of five lived there. The mother had starved to death when her children were small one winter, refusing to eat so they'd have the only food. Uh, and they were dressed like cavemen, everything. Uh, they had walked more than 500 miles total from their original village because the Soviets were always hunting. They wanted to kill every Christian they could get to. Didn't matter how much money needed to be spent. And uh, you can go read the full annals of this. It was so important to kill Christians. And these were just poor villagers. And it describes how they ran into the woods with just a bag of seeds. And uh, then a blight killed their rye crops. Uh, the mother starved to death. But a year later, uh, they lived in different camps over the decades that it took them to get 150 miles out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, and... Um, the Soviets killed conservatively off and on around 50 million people from 1917 through the 1980s. Uh, and before the Soviets could basically get to most of them, they caught pneumonia probably because they, their immune systems were so debilitated. Once other humans came around with new strains of viruses, most of them died. One of them is living today, one of the daughters. Uh, but you uh, read about you know, the things they said and what they went through. Uh, and, and there were tens of thousands they ended up finding decades later in the woods and exterminated. Because even though you're living out in the middle of nowhere, 50 miles, 100 miles, it doesn't matter. You need to die because the all-powerful atheist state says so. And, of course, the atheists come and they're going to have guns. Uh, Piers Morgan said he'd like to shoot me. And a lot of uh, Buzz uh, Bissinger said he'd like to shoot me. And a lot of others, they talk about how they want to kill us. Uh, these are horrible people. Very, very horrible people. Uh, but America is, that's why they demonize preppers. That's why 
if you don't trust the system and you want to be self-sufficient, they don't like you. They want you under their control. Like Bob Dylan wrote in 1983. Yeah, I can see someday when even having your own garden will be against the law. Yeah, it's sundown on the Union. What was made in the USA sure sounded like a good idea until things got in the way. Yeah, we used to grow corn in Kansas. Now we grow it on the moon and eat it raw. Talk about somebody that saw the future. And that's what's going on here. That's what's happening. That's why they want you shut down. Will you punch it back up on screen for folks? I want to show the viewers out there, people watching at InfoWarsNews.com. Uh, the 40 years the Russian family was cut off from all human contact, unaware. And just amazing helicopter photos of their little, the little shack they built. No hammers, no nails. The little daughters that were tiny girls when they ran. And I was looking at uh, some of the other photos on the, on the deeper in the Smithsonian site uh, showing the aerial shots. There it is of the terraces they put up on the side of the gorge uh, to grow the, the few plants that they had that they could also keep the seeds from. In the future, you run to the hills with your seeds, they'll only grow once, then they don't grow the next year. It's all about patenting life, all about centralized control. That's the name of the game. And that's why they don't want you self-sufficient. That's why all over the country now, they're saying you can't have a backyard garden. You might grow marijuana. You might. So you're guilty until proven innocent. You can't trust a prisoner. We're all prisoners now. That, that try to grow a garden in your backyard. Don't trust that in America. Government's got to come look. Government, it's all secret. Building bunkers and buying billions of rounds of ammo. But you, well, they're now saying the see something, say something. Main program is, do you see guns in people's houses? And the average anti-gunner is such a dumb, mindless, domesticated creature that they come in your house, they see a gun case, they call the police. And the police come and take it, even though it's not illegal. And they go, well, there was just a report... You may, sue us, try to get your guns back. You see that in the news. Well, we've decided you might be a danger. The government is here to break us. And I'm telling you, folks, if you don't wake up and realize how much trouble we're in, it's all over. This transcends liberal conservative garbage. It's down to freedom versus slavery. Let's talk to Kim in Florida. Kim, you're on the air. Hello, Alex. Um, I just want to say the same exact thing, that people better wake up because... It's unbelievable. I just had a very recent visit from ATF. They, I wasn't home at the time, but they knew exactly where I was, even the name of the company that I work at. Oh, it's incredible. I had the ATF like a decade ago uh, say that a gun I had didn't have a right serial number randomly. They wanted me to come down there, and it's just a way to harass you. If you're not a Mexican drug cartel shipping narcotics in, you're a bad guy. Uh, and, and, and now it is a purge. We are the new criminals. They want to fill all their new private prisons. It's us, the gun owners. And, yeah. I mean, and we're in trouble. The cops want to keep their jobs. They'll put us in jail all day long. Well, yeah. And, you know, uh, we were led to believe, like, ATF works with uh, the police. And when we did some inquiring, they said, well, we don't know what ATF is doing. They could be doing whatever they want to do. What was their claim? We need to check a serial number or something? No, I... I guess because we had purchased several guns in a short period of time. Oh, yeah, that's the new thing. If you buy yeah. even 100 rounds of ammo, they come and visit you. Like, you're dirty and create a... Ba it's, it's all harassment. I, I mean, I see the reports all over the news where a veteran visited after he bought two new rifles. And, and again, it's all about you're bad, you're the perp, you're a criminal, you did something wrong. It's this new psychology that we're now going to learn how to do the perp walk. That's what TSA is all about, learning about lining up, learn about them putting their hands on you. Where I live now has TSA checkpoints, totally illegal, violates the Tenth Amendment, the Fourth Amendment, they don't care. Yeah, and my my whole reason for calling today is what... What would be your advice on how, on how to deal with this situation? Because at the time, I wasn't home, and they spoke to my husband, which I was the one that purchased the firearms. And as far as I'm concerned, they got all the information they needed to know. Hey, hey no, that's, that's exactly it. You say, this, this isn't a straw purchase. I bought the guns for us, but I bought them legal and lawfully. You're here to try to create a criminal account, a criminal file on us. Uh, you, you know full well. So, so just get on out of here. Uh, and again, these are the ones that ship the guns to Mexico. And outside of law, they tell it was the gun shop that did it to you. When you buy two or more, 
And they wanted a law two years ago. They couldn't get it passed, so they just did it extra legislatively. This is a big issue. Now they're saying they may just ban guns uh, without uh, a law, uh, just, just with a rulemaking. And that's what they do. And then they think you're ignorant. Most of these gun arrests I'm seeing for a flash suppressor or something, they're not even illegal. But the juries are so stupid, they'll put you in jail for a wrong statute. And the lawyers are all so corrupt, they'll put you in jail and make you think you got a deal. They want to give gun owners a record. I'm telling you, folks, it's a criminal purge. And, and listen, you could turn your guns in. They're not going to stop. They're going to take, listen, Ayers and others that were Obama's mentors, this came out in trials. We played the video clip uh, of it being broken down. They said, we're going to put 50 million Americans in forced labor. And we're going to kill 25 million of them. Their goal is to put us in camps and blow our heads off. I mean, they want to do what they did in the Soviet Union, and they will do it. And the neocons are all a bunch of Trotskyites who helped uh, Trotsky do what he did, and they all ran over here because Stalin kicked them out. They're going to try the same thing. These are authoritarians. Folks, this isn't rhetoric. We're in deep trouble. The government is run by evil people. They want a civil war against gun owners. Thomas Jefferson said the level of tyranny that you will live under is the exact amount you put up with. The government is run by real, live authoritarians who have robbed countless third world countries, the IMF and World Bank. They want to re-educate America. They want to start a civil war. Homeland Security was set up for the American people. It's a lot bigger than Obama. This is a long-term strategic plan. The reason the Republican leadership is going along with all this globalism is because they're bought and paid for by Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, and others. Now, I'm not saying this year they're going to come arrest all the gun owners, though they're harassing them and arresting veterans. In fact, here's one of the articles right here. It was just up on Infowars.com. I actually was doing a search on it, uh, where Army veteran arrested for 30 mile mag in New York State faces five felonies, had no criminal record. Those mags are illegal now. And people are saying, well, we're going to defy it. And gun shops are saying, we're going to protest. They're like, good, we'll fill the prisons. And they will. They don't care. It's up to juries to nullify unconstitutional laws. And it's time for these politicians to start getting arrested. They're setting themselves up as God. It happens everywhere else. Look how decadent America is. But we're not all individually decadent. And they think America's dumb. They think we're done. They think they can take over. And I'm telling you, they're saying gun owners are responsible for all crime. We're Nazis. We're scum. We're trash. The government needs to defeat us. This is the nomenclature. Hitler didn't even say things about Jews like that until he'd been in office two or three years. He didn't even write things that radical. In, he, they're saying things publicly that Stalin didn't even say about groups he was wiping out. So we're being demonized. I mean, can you imagine if they got up on the TV and called black people the N-word when they're calling whites the crackers, whites are on there to create division, and they're calling gun owners Nazis? You're being demonized. But you have American hospitality, you're like, oh, shucks, go ahead now. And I mean, it's flooding in. People buying ammo are getting ATF visits. And they go to people with no criminal records, upstanding members of the society. I even saw an article where they visited a cop's house who bought 500 rounds of ammo. It's the idea that we're all bad, government's good. And the, the, the small federal family, as they call it. Janet calls it the federal family. What, is, what are they, Sicilian? <laughs> I mean, it's just amazing. Uh, Michael in Tennessee, you're on the air. Thanks for holding. Yes, I had a, a really quick idea. I think you ought to put a new sticker at the bottom of your uh, new uh, screen there that has the Bill of Rights, or you could also put the Constitution, because I'm an avid reader. I know a lot of people read, and you have a lot of information, and, and this way it would just kind of nail it into these people's heads. I agree. You're talking about on the TV show, start having a scroll? Yes. Yeah. Yes. That makes sense. What do you uh, think you know, about... What do you think about the accelerating gun purge? Change and all that. I'm sorry, caller? I said yes. You know, like they do a new, a new sticker for like the, the New York Stock Exchange and they do updates and all that. You sure, a ticker. You the Bill of Rights or the Constitution. Uh, is that what you called in about? 
Yes, I, that was one of the things. And, and the other thing is, uh, you know, uh, I remembered uh, watching a movie where uh, uh, it was called Kingdom of Heaven or something, and, and uh, the knight had everyone kneel, and he said, as of, as of this day, I'm knighting you all. Just get down on one knee and make this oath. I think deputies ought to just pu- uh, deputize their public like the, like the Barney Fife and uh, Andy Griffith used to do. Yeah, the problem is they've taken over most of the police departments. Uh, we've got a lot of good sheriff's departments because they at least know about the Constitution, and, and they're elected. That's the difference. They want to represent the people more and more. It's time for all of us to deputize ourselves before God and country to understand real authoritarianism has come to our shores. And, and the globalists think they can totally take over. God bless you, Michael. Uh, let's go to Dan in Pennsylvania. Dan, you're on the air. Welcome. Hey, how you doing, Alex? Good, sir. Good Thanks. You and your crew. Thank you for holding. Um, yeah, I just was wondering if uh, if you have seen House Resolution that was introduced 437. It's the assault weapons ban of 2013, and also uh, 449. It helps. Uh, it provides amnesty for the veterans to turn in their guns and register them, and for other purposes, it's really draconian. Also, I know. I know. It talks about. There's a bunch of gun confiscation assault weapons bans in there. It was in Feinstein's uh, first version, uh, and it's got language uh, in it. I don't think people understand. They're like, we just want to have reasonable background checks, and they've got gun bans where you've got to turn them in like New York just passed. Their goal is take our guns while they sit there going, we don't want to take your guns. We don't want to take your guns. They've done that everywhere. You know, they're now taking the single shots and bolt actions in Australia. See, first they take the semi-auto, then they take everything. Uh, what was the particular uh, bill number on that one? That was uh, 437. It's the assault weapons ban of 2013, and it has the text up online. But there was also one other one. It's the um, House Resolution 40, I believe. I was trying to find it online again, and my computer froze up. Yeah, we found but it. Punch it up. No, I've seen that one. Punch it back up for TV viewers. For radio right. listeners, just, uh, just go to the Library of Congress. Uh, it's, it's HR 437. Military. Arm the military in D.C. There's a there's a bill in there that says you know to arm the military in the District of Columbia. No, I know, and and, and that's like Caesar bringing his troops into Rome. Look, they in in the in the NDAA bill that passed last year to supposedly reform it, it continues the secret arrest provision and just gets rid of posse comitatus. That's what I'm telling people, folks. They are going whole hog. And that's why the Republicans have gotten real scared and like, yes, sir, we'll do whatever we're told. You're right. We're bad. You're right. You've got a mandate is because it is hammer down. I mean, I've never been this concerned. This is not a game. This is a revolution by foreign banks. This is espionage. God bless you. Yes. Thank you for bringing that up. Yes, I'm aware of it. That's what I'm telling people. This isn't a game. By the way, you can buy the February issue of InfoWars magazine. On the cover, it says, Why the Tyrants Want Your Guns. About 80% of the 60-page glossy magazine is on that subject. It explains how they're going to take your guns, why they want to take your guns, their strategy to do it, the strategy to beat them. It is available at InfoWarsStore.com. That's InfoWarsStore.com or InfoWarsShop.com will also get you there. And it's at cost. You can buy them in groups of 10 up to 100. In fact, John Bound was at the public library getting books for his daughter yesterday and said he saw a stack of them somebody put in there. So good job, folks. You can also get subscriptions at cost, uh, and you can give subscriptions, gift subscriptions to people you want to wake up. Imagine 12 issues, good, good chance of waking them up. Infowarsstore.com or call 888-253-3139. We've brought back the Obama Joker Tyrant shirt, redesigned, because the first one was a limited edition. So is this one, and your purchase supports the broadcast. Uh, let's talk to Zach in Tennessee. Uh, Zach in Tennessee, you are on the air. Zach, what is on your mind today? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I was just holding from earlier, but um, I was going to tell you, did you see the Bill Gates article that uh, he doesn't care about money? And he goes on to say he's spiritual but doesn't believe in religion. Did you see that one? Uh, yes, I did. Yes, I did. They're bringing in an entire system. We'll look more into that. I'm telling you, it's a total global revolution, ladies and gentlemen designing high tech to enslave us not to empower us it's a total blueprint it's called a technocracy in their own words uh let's talk to zane in fema region three formerly virginia now globalist occupied territory go ahead zane you're you're welcome to the airwaves hey alex how 
Alex. Uh, how's it going? Uh, Pretty good. I, I read an article. I work in one of the few factories left here in Virginia, and someone had posted this article. It was out of a magazine, and it was saying that the way they're going to get the gun grab is they're going to make it where you can't afford to have a gun. They're going to make you get insurance on your guns. Have you heard anything yes, about that? Yes. No, no. They've got state and federal bills. Insurance is a power to tax. The power to tax is the power to destroy. They're hitting us with a thousand torpedoes right now. They're hitting us from every single angle. And we've got to take their attack and show how they're authoritarians with bodyguards and how they've taken guns everywhere else and how this is a plan to enslave us and turn it back on them. We have to go on the offense or we're going to lose everything. Well, that's for sure. I am sick and I am tired. And everybody that hears this needs to be sick and tired. Exactly. I mean, we are being enslaved. Being upset is what got us our liberty. We need to get upset and awake again. God bless you. And I meant to get to this, and I didn't. I'll cover it tomorrow on the weekday show. NRA winning the influence battle over gun control. Uh, Appinions, Appinions is one of the biggest data mining public groups. Uh, and uh, the company breaks down off a variety of data mining what they found, and they have found that Second Amendment advocates are absolutely trouncing the gun grabbers. And this is a, again, nonpartisan, uh, nonpolitical uh, analysis of it. And it says gun rights advocates have more stamina than gun control advocates. Gun rights advocates show military coordination with laser focus. Well, yeah, because we're people that actually work and live in the real world. Any mainline person that supports gun control who isn't a tyrant is just a jellyfish. They think the government loves them and wants to help them. Government wants to inject you with cancer viruses and put you six feet under after you're done working. All right, I'll see you back tomorrow, 11 a.m. Central, Infowars.com. Great job, crew.